All right, everybody, happy Sunday. It is October 30th, around 11 o'clock in the morning. I again have my coffee in my big hug mug. I am joined by my North Carolina affiliate, Bryce. Bryce, how are you doing this morning? Bill, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. We are here to kick off the return of Hokies basketball, women's edition. We are re-welcoming the dynamic duo from Virginia Tech women's basketball in junior guard, Georgia Amor, and center, senior center, Elizabeth Kitley. How are you both doing? Liz, what's going on? How are you? I know you guys are both in the same house, your room's apart, <laughs> um, but how are you both doing? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, we're about a week away from game day, so can't be more excited than that. Go ahead and get us uh, get us started, Bryce, with uh, with some of the questions from last. We'll start with last year. Or no, we won't. We'll start with three years ago or four years ago. Yeah, let's 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 go back in the time machine a little bit. So we like to start off the athlete of the week series with the same question each time. We want to talk about some of the factors and relationships along with your recruitment that led to y'all choosing Virginia Tech as a school for y'all to play basketball. Liz, let's uh, let's start with you first. Yeah. Um... I mean, I think definitely relationships play a huge role um, for most people, but especially me. And I think, you know, coming here was mainly because Coach Brooks um, developed such a strong relationship with my family and definitely my my sister. She's autistic and she's um, 30 years old, but she's, you know, she wanted to be involved, just as involved as me and everything. And I think she would have killed me if I didn't come here, actually. So <laughs> they recruited her more than me. So that definitely worked. Obviously, I ended up at Virginia Tech. So That's awesome. And uh, how about you, George? I know you, you got a unique story as well, being from, I looked it up, uh, Ballarat, Australia. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah, you got the Boom. pronunciation right and all. Good. People love to say Ballarat. Like... <laughs> Ballarat is fine. You can't act no, like but... it's like the easiest thing to <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I, I Googled the pronunciation. I'm going to be honest. I did not. Know <laughs> That's something you could have left out. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Okay. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, relationships is the same thing. Like I came so far over. If I didn't have a good relationship with at least like their head coach, then I probably wouldn't even come over. Like that was a huge selling point. Yeah. That, um, that's awesome. I was reading a little bit about your recruitment to this morning. Um, David Cunningham wrote a nice article. Yeah. So I had I had a few teammates myself that were from Harare, Zimbabwe, and I, I know they when they came over, it was a big cultural shock. What was what was some of the biggest things that really surprised you when you you know came to live in the U.S. permanently? Yeah, the two things were definitely food and just like joking culture like banter like when I was at home you can cross the line very much cross the line and I come over here and I'm hurting people's feelings like some of my friends are crying sometimes and I'm like whoa so I very much simmered down in that aspect but food like David said in the article I gained like 20 pounds because all (laughs) we did was eat and lift and what like it was all of that and I think it was worse too because it was like pandemic so I had gotten used to working out and eating to fulfill that. And then we had no workouts anymore because of COVID. So I was still eating to prepare myself for nothing. So I just gained. Um, you know, Liz, just real quick, what what were some of the sayings that Georgia said that y'all didn't understand? When I played a lot of golf with some Australian golfers, they used the word mint. Like it was that word was used every other sentence. And yeah. uh, it was really like funny things. Y'all were like, what, what is she talking about? Definitely a lot of like, Words that I couldn't say on here, though, like just different words. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly. Or uh, another time. Last season uh, was one of the best in Virginia Tech basketball history. We just had on Coach Giltner. And look, we want to turn the page. We have another year coming up, but we would be remiss if we, I think I used that right. Remissed, remissant, remissed. We would be remiss not to talk about the success that you all saw last year. 23 wins, 13 conference wins, five ranked wins. Um, starting with you, Liz, what were some of the moments and the biggest lessons that you learned last year? Yeah, um, the best moments were definitely towards the end. Uh, that's when we saw a lot of success, like when we beat Georgia Tech at home. Um, but the, the biggest lesson was probably going to Carolina and getting our butts absolutely handed to us. Um, but from from that point on, I think we really – learned like what we need to do we have to have like a full team effort to win and 
you know, next time we played them, the next two times, actually, we, you know, learned from that horrible loss and we just played a lot better. Um, but really, the the showings in Castle this past season, towards the end of the season, were so incredible and it makes a huge difference. And yeah, it just made it just made the end of the season really fun and really special. And then what about for you, Georgia? Yeah, I think we said perfectly, but really the the Georgia Tech game and the NC State game where Castle was like absolutely rocking like that is stuff that we remember. Like I, I remember a few things from the game, but I remember Castle Guard and all of that. So, yeah. I remember winning, of course, in Georgia Tech. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, Castle Guard's the best. I, I know they're all excited to, to get the season started for both uh, the men's and the women's team. To go to the season this year, the season kicks off November 7th. I think we got Mount St. Mary's coming to town. Um, how, how's the team looking right now in practice, and what's the biggest focus so far getting ready for this season? Uh, Georgia, we'll, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, obviously we have a bunch of weapons on the team. Like, there's no denying that. So I think the focus is just, like, I guess you have to know – when to use who because we are so diverse and so we have such variety scoring wise. Um, but yeah, Liz, do you? Well, actually, I, like I, have, a, I have a follow up, up on that, that Georgia. I have a follow up on that. So there's no secret, like, you all have a bevy of newcomers on this team, uh, including mm-hmm. All American Ashley Awusu from Maryland. Um, how are you as a point guard tasked with and approaching kind of getting them very familiar with the team and working them into the offense and the different sets? Yeah, I think they all came from different schools that had different offensive and defensive uh, mentalities. I know especially like Taylor Soul and Clara Ford coming from BC. When we play them, they're out in the lanes. They're trying to speed us up. They're just playing so hard all the time, which is great. But the way that we play is like very different to that. And I think the best thing that it, it's just an effort wise, it's nothing to do with skill. It's just like tuning their effort. Um, and then, like, Ashley, like, she came from a place where I think they just hoop. So getting her comfortable in the system is, like, really, really important. I think she's doing a really good job of that so far. For someone who doesn't know what that means, what do you mean from somewhere where they just hoop? What does that mean? They just get the ball and they just tween, tween, behind the back, step back, score. Tween, tween, like, we, behind we, the back, step back, <laughs> score. Wow. We have we have about like 40 different plays and it, it adds mm-hmm. up in the season too. So we're a very systematic team and Coach Brooks runs really pretty sets. Um, and some teams just don't have that. Maybe they have five main sets and just let the girls play. But we know where we want to get the ball and we know how to get that. So very different, but I love it. Obviously, I love it. I hope the, all the other girls love it. And then Liz, what about you? What have been some of the biggest focuses for you and the team uh, in summer camp? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, what she said really well, um, it's a good problem to have, but we just have, like, really important new additions. Like, we don't just have, like, tiny pieces of the puzzle. Like, we have people that are going to make a huge impact. So getting them to – getting everyone to play at the same speed, the same style is, you know, it's a challenge, but it's something that we're going to do. And um, we've we've been working on that the last – you know, we've been practicing for, what, a month and a half maybe by now. Like, it's been – a work in progress, but, you know, we're definitely getting there and it's a long season. So I'm sure we're just going to continue to keep getting better throughout. Is that a tough adjustment? You know, with, with the transfer portal, it's it's not like you're the the girls coming in are are freshmen, right? They're girls that are used to contributing a lot at their former programs. And now they're coming to Virginia tech to, to help y'all. And I don't want to say they expect contributing the same type of minutes, but how, how is, you know, how does that adjustment work when it's like, hey, this is our new teammate and she's going to start? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it's a lot of work for the coaches because we have like we have me and Georgia who have been here for like three years, whatever. Then we have like KT who transferred last year and she's been in the system for two years. So she kind of gets it. And then we have senior transfers that have been doing something completely different. But then we also have freshmen who know absolutely nothing. So it's like <laughs> teaching everyone and getting them to do the same thing when everyone is at such different levels. Um, respect to Coach Brooks. That's that's what I have to say. We have to help him out and kind of, you know, carry the girls along with us because obviously we've been here for a while, but it's, it's definitely a challenge. For, for the freshmen that quote unquote know nothing, we won't hold that against you. Who, <laughs> who, what, uh, who, who, should we, who, who do we not know about yet that we should have on our radar as the season gets started? What, I, I, I know you love all your teammates. Is there a freshman that's kind of sticking out that 
you would say, hey, Billy, hey, Bryce, y'all, y'all need to watch this girl. She's going to be a star. I have to stick up for my my girl, Charlie, from Herm. She, like, she came here and she used to get on my damn nerves, but she has grown <laughs> up so much. She has grown up so much. I told her that the other day, like, maturity-wise and basketball-wise, like, she, like, she's strong. <laughs> she's she's going to be really good. Did, did y'all know each other back in Australia? Yeah. Yeah, so we, I was a part of, like, a development squad for a WNBL team, the Melbourne Boomers. Um, and she was a part of that too, but back then I was like 18 and she was probably like 16. So it was very young. Um, she was kind of quiet too. So I didn't really like, I knew of her and she knew of me, but we definitely like, she definitely asked me a lot of questions during the recruiting process. So that relationship developed over then. And then she came here and just doing my best to make sure it was as smooth as possible because it's not easy. Um, so I hope that I did that for her. She might tell you otherwise, but. Got it. Shout out Melbourne, Melbourne Boomers. Okay. I like it. <laughs> Go ahead, though. Uh, yeah. Every time – are we missing anybody, Liz? Anybody else that is uh, a yeah. freshman, sophomore, or someone who hasn't contributed as much that you think will play a big part this year? Um, I think uh, just an underrated player in general, a couple actually, like Kayla King. She's been like a, what, three-year starter, but she mm-hmm. doesn't get nearly as much hype as, you know, some other girls on the team. But she's just that, like – quintessential three and D player. Like she will knock down a shot when we need her and she will always guard the best player on the other team. Like she's just Mm -hmm. so important to our team and we're so grateful for her. And I just want to give her a shout out anytime there's an opportunity because she doesn't get as much love in the typical media. I want to ask about every time we talk about the women's basketball team, it seems that you are accomplishing something new, continuing to build an amazing program in huge testament to coach Brooks and everybody who's gone through the program. But something that was really cool this past year was Asia Shepard, who has been at Virginia tech forever, um, was a great play, was a great player at tech goes into the WNBA and wins the WNBA finals her first year. I'm just curious, like having a relationship with her and I'm sure both of you have aspirations to play at the next level. What does that mean for Virginia tech as a program to have put, somebody into the WNBA and the just publicity that it comes from. Like I used to play with her and now she is at the top of our sport. I mean, I think it, it just shows the growth of the program uh, as a whole, because I think that she was coach Brooks's first recruit to Virginia tech. Um, so she really, you know, saw it from the start. Like when she got here, I'm pretty sure they were just not very good at all. And just every single year, how the program's gotten better. And then, I was a freshman when she was a junior, so um, it had already grown a lot by the time I got here, but she's kind of always been there to look up to because, you know, she's paved the way in in many senses, and even now taking it to the next level, I mean, I definitely uh, see myself doing that. I'd love to do that, and to achieve, like, the greatest championship possible is, is so cool, and you know, she came back to visit us afterwards, which was awesome, and share some words of wisdom. Um, I mean, yeah, what what more could you have to look up to? That's an incredible feat. And now she's overseas, too, which is something I also want to do. So, you know, she's busy. So, Georgia, next one uh, is for you. Every, again, every time we've had the pleasure of speaking to members of Virginia Tech Women's Basketball, they speak out on the bonding, the naturally natural family atmosphere that Coach Brooks has developed. What are mm-hmm. some of those events or experiences that you all did this year to bring the team together and kind of uh, bond during the offseason? Yeah, I think – the best part about that is nothing is forced. So like you can ask for like events and stuff like that, but we're not, we're not forced to do any of this team bonding stuff. Um, Coach Brooks does a great job as at recruiting players, but also people and family associated. Um, so everything just comes naturally. And I think personally for me, like having T soul and Clara Ford from Boston college, they've done wonders chemistry wise um, for this team. So nothing is ever forced and, I couldn't, I couldn't really like name an event, but all I know is that we're hanging out a lot more than we did in previous years. And the chemistry is just like natural. That's awesome. Except, except y'all have to be in different rooms for the, for the interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise we'd be in the, what? You're in bed. I'm a, <laughs> like, we only have one desk in the apartment. Oh, and it's so, in okay. Room. <laughs> Okay. All righty. Um, so, it, you know, Billy mentioned this, this team seems to, you know, 
overachieve each each and every year. Y'all are reaching new heights, um, breaking through that glass, glass ceiling, you know, all those cliches. What what are some of the goals this year uh, for the team and then for each of y'all individually? Uh, Georgia, we, we can start with you. Yeah, I mean, obviously in the ACC championship, we were preseason number two. We should we think we should be preseason number one, but what a better opportunity than to go out and show it rather than just be put on the list. Um, and, you know, I think as far as we can in the NCAA tournament, I think a Final Four is like a genuine possibility for this team. So aspirations are very high, but they're also very achievable. Um, you know, some teams go out and they say they want to win this, win that, but they're saying it and they're kind of reaching. I don't think we're reaching at all. Um, but personally, too, just I think I'm starting to fully – be confident and understanding the system as a point guard. Not that I haven't previously, but just being a leader and teaching the other people. Um, personally, for me, that's a goal to carry out through the season, just to be that calming presence and having everything organized. So I've grown up from 20 to 21. I've grown up a lot. Talk that talk, Georgia. Good luck. Uh, good luck beating that, Liz. All right, Liz, what about you? <laughs> and, uh, personal goals. Just yeah. retweet. Team goals, definitely just retweet. Yeah, I mean, we're all on the same page with that. I think everyone in the program, you know, has those high aspirations and we think we can get there. Um, my personal goals too this year are similar. Uh, I think, you know, being a senior and like we said before, having all those different pieces coming together this year, it's really important that um, the leadership role is just, you know, handled really well by me. And um, Georgia helps a lot with that too, obviously being a point guard, but yeah, it's, it's the fourth year, fourth go round. So uh, helping carry everyone else along is really important, um, especially, you know, with this possibly being the last year. It's, you know, like one more maybe shot. So I want to make the most of it. See, if I was uh, if I was an annoying podcaster, I would ask you to dive into that. You did <laughs> but uh, we'll just leave it at that. We won't dive in any deeper on that. <laughs> Um, we, we need we need a Final Four banner in Castle. That's all I that know. So yeah. I, I I want y'all to go get that. Let's yeah. uh, let's make that happen. Can we lock that in? I, I I guarantee this is this is a this is a Billy Ray Mitchell guarantee. I'm hoping Bryce jumps in. If you all are in the Final Four, I am at the Final Four. That is a yeah. that is an absolute guarantee. Hey, we get we get family tickets. We get four of them. I might have extra. Okay. Oh, I will bring the family. I, I, I will definitely now be at the uh, will be at the final four. Here's something um, that we're excited to talk about. Um, Billy look, I, is very excited to talk about this. Look, section. Here's here's what I don't understand. Here's what I don't get. At the end of the day, you have to appreciate art and good things. And Taylor Swift is the Michael Jackson of our generation. Okay, I'm a songbird grown man. of our generation. I, I he is, she is the songbird of our generation. I'm a 26 year old male. And a lot of people give me crap, but you know what? If I'm driving down the street and I'm belting out lover in my F-150, that's because it's amazing, amazing <laughs> music. Like that, that it is what it is. So um, we thought who better? Uh, actually, this is kind of your fault, Georgia. So mm -hmm. before the album was even out, we had Liz putting Georgia on here, maybe incriminating, who knows, but apparently he had early access to the Taylor Swift album and she's walking around the locker room, bopping her head, getting all excited. Uh, and I was like, dude, Midnight's coming out. So we wanted to talk to you guys about Midnight's. First and foremost, Georgia, you've had access to this album longer than most people. What are your thoughts? How is it, how is it settled in and what are your thoughts on, uh, on the Midnight's album? You know what's so tragic is that because my Australian – my Spotify is Australian and my phone is Australian. So obviously like all the time stuff is set differently. So for Adele, I had an album 14 hours earlier. For Beyonce, I had an album 14 hours earlier. Taylor Swift is a smart human being. She released that stuff American time. So I, I was so excited. I was so pumped. I was like, it's almost midnight at home. I'm gonna get this. I never got it. I never oh. got it early. So all that anticipation for nothing. Wow. Because she's a she, mastermind. She is smart. <laughs> She is so smart. I was so mad. Um, but Dang. honestly, too, I go through this thing, and I feel like it's a worldwide phenomenon. I don't know if that's the right word. Mm. When I listen to an album for the first time, it all sounds the same. No matter, okay. who, yeah, no so matter true. who it is, yeah. it all sounds the same. So it takes me so long to, like, decipher everything. And I have to be so, like, conscious when I listen to it. So, I'm, like, Elizabeth's been listening to that album, like, every single day on repeat. Mm. I'm pretty sure her, like, Apple Music um yearly rundown it's like 
just purely Taylor Swift, right? Oh, well, I'm way past. I'm way past that stage. I, I'm way past that. I can. I have that. My vinyl is literally right there. The, like, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that the vinyl for Midnight's already? You already have it. I have it pre-ordered. I don't think you understand. Like, I am obsessed. I don't think I do class. understand. No, I don't. <laughs> I guess SS is really <laughs> next level. So, well, then we'll start here. What are Bill? You weren't ready for this. I, I wasn't. I thought I was going to come in with the most. I threw a curveball. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what are what are your favorite songs of the album? If you guys could give us a top three, what are your three favorite songs on the album? We'll start, uh, Liz. I feel like you'll get offended if we don't start with you. So, Liz, we'll, we'll start. With you. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know. I have a formal ranking on my notes, but it like changes all. So the do time. I. So do yeah. I. I have my my initial, and I was like, okay, four days later, it changes all the time. But I, I don't know. I I feel like I'm. I, I always like like slower songs. So I don't know. I love Labyrinth and I love Snow on the Beach. Um, Be- Bejeweled is also just fun. So are you counting the 3 a.m. tracks or no? Of course I'm counting the 3 a.m. tracks. <laughs> you think I'm leaving Great War out of here? Come on. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, the great, the great War and Glitch are also like top top five. Okay. Yeah. Georgia. Out of all the ones that I've listened to in the background while we're driving to Han every day, because that's the only thing that's on, it's Lavender Haze. Um, what is that? Vigilant. Vigilante bleep. Yep. I didn't like that one. Really? Yeah. Sorry. Georgia likes all like the upbeat. Okay. But I also do like Snow on the Beach. Only because she's a mastermind once again. And she said featuring Lana Del Rey and she has one line. But I know every single person. Lana Del Rey's like breathing on the track. She's not doing anything. Well, every single person was waiting for her to do something. It's like, it's so, like it builds a climax. It really does. And for like uh-huh. a listener, you're waiting, you're waiting, and you hear the one line, and I feel like the one line is perfectly played out to the point where like you're satisfied, but you're disappointed. Mm-hmm. You're satisfied because you heard it, but you're disappointed because it's like you can't feature someone for one line and have her as a feature. But she did it. <laughs> but she did. So are re- are neither of you really gonna say Antihero, which is the best song on the entire album? Neither of you like Antihero. That's like in the middle for me. I don't know. I love it though. But you, you don't understand like the top, like there's only one song that I would skip, honestly. Like everything else I love, like it's all relative. Okay. No, neither of you said, well, I'll just give you my, I actually brought you on here just to give you my A-list. So I would love to talk about this. Yeah. Please don't care. Th- this my- segment's not about y'all. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is for care. Billy. This is Billy's therapy right now. No, so, please. uh, Anti-hero. I'm reading this directly off of my notes that I did the first time. So <laughs> anti-hero. Wrote. I mean, I literally just wrote here, okay, Taylor, dropping bars. Like she was yeah. literally almost rapping on anti-hero. So yeah. like shout out to her. Snow on the breach, snow on the beach. Like I have really bad ADHD and my parents used to buy me like those like sounds cds where it'd be like oh like, here's beach music beach sounds for an hour and maybe it'll put you to sleep or rain in the forest just play snow on the beach on luke it'll put me right to sleep it's, it's just unbelievable bigger than the whole sky excellent great war and then paris i think paris is going to be really really good live i don't know if paris is as good on the album as it's going to be live i am so glad that you're like not just like i saw a tiktok and this guy was like city boys up 100 like puts up Midnight's on his story and like starts like listing random songs and he like hasn't listened to it but he's obviously doing it for like replies or something like that oh yeah that? no i i, I that's but you you had extensive joke. research oh of course i mean and then my losers list oh i gotta say maroon has climbed the list ever oh. since we've been listening to it maroon definitely is, is a little bit higher can you guys get a maroon night for at uh one of the castle games this year like a taylor <laughs> well, night really- Apparently, there's a Taylor Swift night. There is on the schedule. And I was like, um, why did nobody tell me about this? We have a Taylor Swift night? Somebody sent it to me. Yeah, it's like on the official like home game. Oh, uh, Bryce. Bryce, uh, we we're gotta, like, I got it up. I got it up. Hold on. Yeah, Bryce, we got to put that in the budget. We're, that's <laughs> We got to do, we gotta do we, a Sons of Saturday trip for the Taylor Swift we night. We definitely need like you on the on the decks. I mean, can we get the uh, the big fat heads? Like do the big <laughs> fat heads of Taylor, of Taylor Swift? While he's looking it up, uh, my losers, the ones that I don't like, oh, no. I actually did not like Midnight Rain. Too slow. Vigilante, uh, I'll say it, vigilante shit. It just, <laughs> come on, what do we, like, it's just so anti-Taylor. But you know what? The album wasn't for me. It was for Taylor. If that makes her happy, so be it. Wasn't a big on, wasn't big on Glitch. It seems, <gasps> seems like, okay, relax. 
this is my list. <laughs> it, it, it seemed like a bunch of the songs in this album seemed like they would be like soundtracks to like, um, like a Netflix documentary. Like you would be hearing it as like the credits rolled sometimes. Oh, like produced by Netflix. Yes. Just on Netflix. Okay, I get what you're Exactly. Doing. Like one of those movies Netflix. like Kissing Booth or something. Yes. Uh, I guess a couple of other ones that climbed the list for me. Would have, should have, could have. Would have, could have, should have has climbed mm-hmm. the list. And also you're on your own, kid. You're on oh, your own. Kid. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Hey, Bill, not to interject here. But you have Taylor Swift night. Taylor Swift night is against Wake Forest on January 22nd. This is the first time I've heard of this. So I, 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 I it's right here. It's, it's happening. You know, it'd be a great idea is if you put your favorite Taylor Swift song on the back of your jersey. That'd be awesome. Oh, or cut. Yes, we got to find it. We're gonna get our graphics guy to do an awesome graphic. I, I'm excited. I will be. We need, to, we need to make like the album covers, like ev- like Reputation and Lava, but like Photoshop, like the players. Yes, we're gonna do that. That is something that we're gonna do. I'm putting it in the post. I'm putting it in I the did post. I did the reputation order. one. We're gonna do that. You can. Uh, you are the the project inspiration for that. Yeah. Um, what is, is, this, the, is this at the top of your fun employment list project right now, Bill? Taylor yes. Night? It has yes. to be. This is on my fun employment list. Yes. This is this is gonna make your weekend. I make my weekend. It just made my the rest of my year. I have until <laughs> January twenty second to have this stuff going. Uh, all right. What is the best album? that Taylor Swift has put out? What is the album that speaks to you the most? Bryce, I want to tag you in. I know you listen to some Taylor Swift. You got it. You got to give me your favorite Taylor Swift album. I can go first since this segment is oh. about me. Uh, <laughs> Folklore and Evermore are both awesome. I love like fall vibes. And I don't think an artist has ever owned a season of the calendar year quite like Taylor Swift has. She said, hey, autumn is awesome. I am now synonymous with autumn. So you put on your cardigan, you head outside, you throw some leaves up in the air. Taylor Swift time. LeBron throws chalk, Taylor throws leaves. That's, mm-hmm. that's basically the Taylor Swift thing. Bryce, so, favorite Taylor Swift album. So this is sad. I don't know actually any of the album names. So I'm going to need some help here. But I, I told my wife we were talking about this segment. And she can't. She has mentioned the Bad Blood song with Shawn Mendes duet version to me like four times. Lover, lover, sorry, not bad blood. Lover with Sean <laughs> Mendez. And she's like, it's the Sean Mendez duet version. I don't know. I, that's all I'm going off of. Whatever song, ha- whatever album has that song, it, I, I do enjoy it. That's a, that's a sneak, uh, like, we're in the car, just the two of us. Like, no one can laugh at me. Like, we'll belt it. There's no shame. Uh, that That's probably the best one. I don't know what album that is, though. That's a great song. Georgia, favorite Taylor Swift album? I have two. So it used to be 1989 because that was like the only one that I really listened to. But mm. now it's Reputation. And I listen to Reputation like pre-game because it just has like some really angry white woman tracks on it. Just gets angry me in the mood. white woman tracks. Wow. Yep. You, you've had some breakout quotes today. Tween, tween, behind yeah. the back. <laughs> shoot. I mean, and now angry white women tracks. Uh, Liz. What uh, are you an angry white woman track person, or is there another album that speaks to you? I love Reputation and Lover, but I'm such a folklore girl and evermore. Okay. Yeah, yep. Owning the season of fall, you know our our uh, our good friend Pat Finn says that uh that aut- August that autumn is the most overrated season. I'm gonna have to go ahead and uh and disagree. Um, next one that I have here are your top three songs. By Taylor Swift. Now, I think this is a bit of a loaded question. Um, <laughs> reason being is because there are songs that you will listen to by yourself. Like Bryce said, there are closet Taylor Swift songs where you're like, I love this song, but I'm not going to let everybody know that I love it. And then you have the ones that you're like, yo, these are bangers. I'm going to listen to this with, with all my, my homies. So I went with the one that like, if you just put it on at a party, like everybody's going to sing it. And I think that's our song. That song had a chokehold on on high school, Paramus Catholic High School in Paramus, New Jersey. Uh, Lover, who doesn't love singing along to that song with some good headphones? And then Blank Space. Nothing gets people fired up like mm-hmm. Blank Space. So those are my those are my three. Bryce, or is it just the Sean Mendez one? That that's that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna be a one trick pony here. I do love Taylor Swift. I just. I think this is this is y'all's conversation, and I'm just expecting. Yeah. <laughs> this is really this is really unfair for Bryce because I feel like I'm not as into it as both Liz and 
Billy, but right. I'm like somewhere in the middle where I can like act like I'm, mm, but I'm like not enough. Like, all right, well, this I is the last question. No so just pretend one more time, and then Liz, we'll have a recurring meeting every time a, a, a album. Comes <laughs> out. We just okay. need you to pretend for one more question, Georgie. Your top three oh. Taylor Swift songs. I don't have to pretend for these because I have "You Belong with Me" as number one because that was on Band Hero, and I used to play that on like Expert. Band Hero. And then, is that like yeah. Guitar Hero in Australia? No, no, it was like the other. It wasn't like Guitar Hero. It was like, like off brand pop songs. Yeah. Or something. Oh. Like there wasn't as many rock songs. Okay. Um. So "You Belong with Me," "New Romantics," and "Dress." Okay. Liz. Mm-hmm. I was going to say dress on reputation also. Also, right where you left me on Evermore. And then literally anything on folklore. Um, that is That has no skips for me. But I'll say Cruel Summer will get me screaming. Like if I'm running, I will listen to Cruel Summer on Lover because that has a good, you know, beat. <laughs> Cruel Summer. So you're just, you're just running down Roanoke Street screaming <laughs> Taylor Swift lyrics. Angry white girl songs. That's what we love. <laughs> I'm taking notes over here. <laughs> Learning. Um, I guess I guess we'll 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 fold one more in here because Bryce made a good point when we were talking about this. So there are artists when they come out with an album, everything stops. Everything mm-hmm. stops, and you listen to that album. Who is that person for you? You cannot say Taylor Swift. Georgia, go first. Um, oh, that's odd. Let me check my Spotify. Actually. Fred again? Do you know who that is? I've heard of Fred again before. Yeah, I have never really listened to much of his music until now because he just dropped one. So I've listened to his album. That's one thing that stopped me in my tracks. Okay. Um, and then probably the Wombats. The Wombats. Yeah, that's like Those a British, like British band. Okay, I was about to British say British band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like. This is really embarrassing, but I've been listening to a lot of Central C. I couldn't tell He's you. Like, what, I couldn't tell you what that is. You have to give him a listen. He's like an English rapper. It is hilarious. Something about like grime and stuff like that right now is really getting to me. Okay. So like three completely different albums that I would never say, but for some reason it's in my realm right now. Central C. I'm gonna have to mm-hmm. listen to them and scream while I go for my. Run. The, you know that. You know that. You probably heard on TikTok like. The Doja song. Somebody tell Doja Cat. I'm trying to indulge in that. Keep going. Uh-uh, I can't <laughs> <tell them. laughs> it's, it's the guy that did that. Okay, okay. I'm going to check that one out. And then Liz, who is it for you? Probably the 1975. I guess. Love the 1975. Chocolate? We, oh, come on. We were discussing like the lyrics. We think that what they're saying is not what they're saying, but it makes so much sense to us. It's a bit hard to understand, but we make up our own lyrics. The accent's really strong, but that's okay. I love it. What's your favorite the 1975 mo- song? Oh, I mean, th- that album with Chocolate and Girls and all that just is superior, but I, ha- I have the new one on vinyl, too. I'm trying to get into it. They're, they're all sounding a bit of the same right now, but I have to, like... What's up with the vinyl move? What is that? Is that what the kids are doing nowadays, buying vinyls? Do you have a record player? Yeah. Well, my dad bought it for me. It's, he's like really into it right now. So okay. I'm just taking it. Yeah. So that wraps it up for uh, midnight. Look, I could talk about this all day, um, but uh, we're, we're going to cut that short and move into rapid fire. But before we do that, heads up, Georgia, Liz, you know, holidays are right around the corner. You know, you might be looking for a present for your parents, might be looking for a present for your friends. Um, the Sons of Saturday Athlete of the Week podcast is proudly bought to you, brought to you by Whitley's Peanuts. Whitley's is a family-owned business that has produced the finest gourmet peanuts for over 35 years. And even better, it is operated by three generations of Hokie graduates. If you head on over to Whitley Peanut, Whitley'sPeanut.com and you type in SOS, you get 10% off and free shipping of your Whitley's peanuts. They have chocolate covered peanuts. They have candy corn peanuts. They have all sorts of crazy peanuts. It is the official nut of Sons of Saturday and the preferred peanut of Virginia Tech athletics. So Whitley's peanuts bringing you the Sons of Saturday athlete of the week. And we're moving into rapid fire. Georgia, it's been three years of living in the United States. What is your favorite place that you have visited and your favorite place that you have 
My favorite place is definitely Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, I feel like it just gives, like, Melbourne vibes, which is really biased because anytime I go to any city, I'm like, oh, this reminds me of home, and I'll immediately love it. Mm-hmm. But D- Washington, D.C. for sure. And then favorite place to eat? I don't know. Do you have a favorite I, fast food? Fast food? Um, five Guys, I guess. Except okay. I don't really want to pay like 30 bucks every time I go. I was about to say that doesn't really fit in the fast food category because yeah. you end up spending 35 bucks. Like I'm talking like Burger King, McDonald's. You like Chick-fil-A. I, mean, I like Chick-fil-A. But like I'm getting a grilled, I'm getting grilled chicken from Chick-fil-A. Like that doesn't scream fast food. Billy, you know Billy has a power rankings for fast food too in his notes, by the way. Bryce, your secret. I'm try, I try to keep it a secret, but this podcast is really about me. I mean, look, Burger King to me, <laughs> me, Burger King has the best burger. It's not really a question, uh, in my in my personal opinion. But uh, and What's then this, for both of you, this um, list. That's the amount of America. America. There's five things on this list. Cheese it. List? Can you read them? What are the five it best? Cheez Its, Buffalo Chicken Dip, Ranch, Barbecue, and then I showed Coach Brooks the list, and he took my phone and he put his own name in it. So, so there, are, I, I left it there. But those are the five best things about America, and number one is Cheez Its. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, sticking to the food <laughs> subject, and we'll start with Liz. So you're both going to dinner, okay? Separately, you're both going to different dinner separately. Um, you can invite anybody you want dead or alive, to come to this dinner with you. Who are the people you're bringing and where are you eating? Starting with you, Liz. Well, now that it's on my mind, especially, I'm definitely bringing Taylor Swift. Yes. Uh, where would I take Taylor Swift? That is... Well, hold on. You have three other people to invite, too. <laughs> That's it. She's done. <laughs> Taylor Swift, her fiancé, <laughs> and her mom. No, actually, I'd bring Jack Antonoff, I guess. Do you or... listen to the bleachers? Huh? Do you listen to the bleachers? No, but I, I want to get into it. I know, I know. We'll get you. We'll get you a starter pack. The bleachers. I know, are I need to. It, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I don't even know. Jack, Jack Matt, 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 Matt. Huh? Who's number? Who's who are the other two? Jack Antonoff, Taylor Swift. Uh, I guess uh, Matty Healy's the singer from the 1975. So I'll just keep it with that. Okay. Like, do I need another one or no? You need one more, and then where you're going to eat? One more. Let's see. I'll bring Claro. I love, she's a singer too. I love her. So I don't know. Yeah. And then where where are you going? Where would we go? This is so hard. Like, I don't know why I can't stop thinking about Olive Garden, but that's so inappropriate. (laughs) Everyone says that. I don't know why. I think that's the third Olive Garden that we've gotten on this podcast about that. It's just better places to eat in Blacksburg. (laughs) It could be here, it could be anywhere. Hmm. Maybe I'll take them to Eastern Divide, the brewery. They have good food. Never been to Eastern Divide. Oh, you should go. Um, Georgia, four people, and where are you going to eat? Four. Four. Pe- you get four guests, dead or okay. alive. They could be anybody. Oh, I'm going to Nando's. Okay. I miss Nando's, and I'm gonna bring. I've had an obsession over the past few days. Erling Holland, the soccer player, the freak. Okay. I need to really ask him about his diet and what makes him so good. And then I would probably take Kelsey Plum and probably LaMelo Ball as well, just basketball-wise, point guard talk. And then I'll probably top it off with – I don't know why my instinct is to say Drake. Okay. And I don't even listen to him like that, but – Okay. Maybe I want some of his knock stuff. He's he definitely has cool stories. Here. Yeah. Um – what are both of y'all's favorite moments that you have had at Virginia Tech off the court? Oh, I know mine's easy. My, my freshman year, we got to go to um, France and Italy. So, I mean, how much cooler could that be? We went to Europe for two weeks. Uh, and that was awesome. Um, we went to Puerto Rico last year and that was pretty cool. But honestly, going to, we went to um, the Hornets uh, preseason game recently. They played Boston. And I love the Celtics, but it was just good to like watch that in that environment. Yeah. Yeah, this was this is actually a question that I was really excited about. So Bill here thinks he can still play some ball. I hear talk about it quite often. You know, I think I think he could have a presence out there. He's like six foot five, but I just I just can't see him being too quick out there. Sorry, Bill. If if Bill was to play y'all in one on one, how 
how badly are y'all beating him? And is he even scoring a point if we're going to 11? There's no way that he can guard Georgia. Um, she, I thought you were about to say me. As in yourself. No, I, I'm backing you up, Georgia. Come on. Like, Thanks. You, your ankles will be deceased, like gone. You'll be on the floor in five seconds. Okay. He's got weak ankles. I, I was gonna say, why, why do you? Where does the weak ankles <laughs> scouting report come in? Where, where, where does it say that on my scouting report? I, I'm just, I'm just a hunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, Liz no. has been working on some scary stuff. She might hit you with a sky hook or two. I don't see Ooh. any other NCAA female athlete doing a sky hook. So let me know when you do, because I don't see anybody else but her. We are we are pro skyhook for this podcast, but uh, so it sounds like Bills losing. Sounds like Bills losing eleven nothing uh, in both games, which which I would pay to watch. Um, secondly, so we're gonna so Halloween's around the corner. Um, what is favorite candy and then least favorite candy? We'll start uh, with you, George, and don't be afraid to throw an Australian candy out there that we we don't we're not aware yeah. of just yet. I was gonna say favorite candy is pods. They're like they're like a chocolate cookie cup and that's smaller but they have like caramel in the middle and it'll be like Mars bar flavored or like Twix caramel and then it'll be covered on with chocolate on top they are they're better than Tim Tams everyone want to say that Tim, Tim Tams, Tams are, are good like, I, everyone wants to say that they're like Australia's is. best thing but pods are very slept on pods? I'll have to, my mom's coming over Christmas so I'll have to get a bag and give to you guys because they are phenomenal pods. okay and then the worst has to be like the what are those red um Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Mm-hmm. Ugh, Twizzlers suck. Nobody likes Twizzlers. I like Twizzlers. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and what about How you? do you like Would you buy them? Favorite? Yeah. So, like, they're a great, like, like study snack when I was in college. You just kind of put one in your mouth and just, I don't know. That's what worked. <laughs> Whatever worked, right? I've never uh, heard someone be so passionate about liking Twizzlers. I think oh, it's, not, likes it's, Twizzlers. Not, it's not a passion. I just felt like I was targeted there. Like, no one likes Twizzlers. And then I said I like them. Okay. So I would I actually defend myself. Rather, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what the trick-or-treat culture is like in Australia. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, like, I would rather someone hand me, like, 10 cents trick-or-treating than me Twizzlers. <laughs> I, I, when people give you Twizzlers, it's like, yo, you definitely are just trying to, like, piss off the neighborhood kids like that was your, that was your mission today it's terrible. Uh, and then georgia what about liz, what, or, sorry, no, liz, liz, what you. about you what's your favorite least favorite candy uh, i mean i've never been sad about getting a twix like twix are just stable they're really mm-hmm. good and then least favorite i mean probably like payday or something I don't know. payday nobody said candy corn candy corn sucks too oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Candy corn, they're very overrated i think overrated i feel like everybody hates them candy corn no it's still like people like to have them around this time of year it's very right? american yeah mm. in a good way or bad way <laughs> it's not it didn't make the list it didn't make the list bill it did not make the top five uh on the subject of food i know this is right around the corner um top three thanksgiving dishes Liz, we'll start with you because I don't think they have. I don't know a lot about Australia, but I don't think they have Thanksgiving. It has to be mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, and ham. Like those mashed are like potatoes. holy trinity. I also love green bean and casserole, then, but that's more controversial. I love the nope, green bean turkey. Is ham is so much better than turkey. Turkey is it is something that's also overrated. Uh, Georgia, we'll ask you this. Uh, I don't know what, like, are there any weird, like, holiday food traditions in Australia? Like, is there a holiday where people just bring, like, a Thanksgiving of Australia? Is there anything like that? I don't think so. We, like, I mean, we'll get together for, like, Easter and Christmas, but that's about it, I guess. And, mm-hmm. like, even then, like, I feel like we eat a lot of lamb. So, like, we'll have, like, roast lamb with, like, mint jelly or mint sauce or something, and that doesn't seem to be very popular over here, so... I love lamb. You usually have to go to Greek restaurants to get lamb, though. Usually, yeah, but like, like a really nice yeah. Greek house. Like, mm-hmm. I like that, but I feel like it's like very, like oily too. Like they obviously cook it different than like, like we would just like have a regular roast, like a roast rack of lamb, in the oven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, last question that I have for both of you: What is the goat holiday? The best holiday 
get a lot of Christmas, get a lot of 4th of July, get a lot of Thanksgiving. Um, some weird people say New Year's. I don't really think that's a holiday. It's more like a day to change the calendar. But uh, Liz, we'll start with you. Favorite holiday? Yeah, I mean, it's basic, but I have to say Christmas. That's when I see all my family, so, yeah. And Georgia? I would say Christmas, too, but Christmas in Australia because it's summertime. Mm -hmm. That's right, hemispheres. I know nothing about that either. Mm -hmm. Uh, awesome well this has been a ton of fun uh obviously really appreciate both of you joining the show again wishing you the best of luck this season and as always we end the show with sharky's shout outs this is where you can shout out whoever you'd like to shout out let people know where they can follow you um and we'll start with you liz sharky shout outs oh like i shout out someone else or myself you, you can do whatever you want this is your time you can promote your twitter you can say um, you know Shout out to whoever. This is your time. Sure. I'll shout out to my sister. Shout out, Raven. Love ya. My Instagram and Twitter are just at Elizabeth Kitley. There you go. Georgia, your turn. Well, my Instagram and whatever is my name, but I want to shout out the Kayla King and DeAsia Greg, the under the underrated people on our team, the smarts of our team. I want to shout out those two. So I don't know their ats, but you can find them. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, best of luck this season. Thank you all for joining us so much. Your Athletes of the Week, Liz Kitley and Georgia Amore. Best Woo! of luck this season, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.